Hello. So, this video in Cognitive Psychology is on Chapter 7, the Hierarchical Semantic Network Model. That's what we're talking about here, the first model that's mentioned in Chapter 7. How information uh, is stored in memory. So here, it's stored in a network model uh, in that it envisions individual pieces of information being stored in individual neurons or nodes, right? And that these nodes are going to be connected with each other through links. It's just that this model, network model, views that information is stored in a hierarchical fashion in memory. So that means you have the more encompassing topics and pieces of information stored higher up in the network. Right? So up at the top, you might have animal. Below that, you might have different types of am animals, I mean mammals, fish, birds, for instance. And then under, let's go from animal to mammal, then under mammal, you'd have all the various types of mammals stored under mammal, such as in the textbook, the example of dog. And then under dog, this model would predict that you'd have the various breeds of dogs stored under dog, right? Now don't forget, the textbook has other examples other than the animal, mammal, dog, Bernie's mountain dog, Right? It also has this example chart of uh, birds and fish. So the example on the test might not be the example from the textbook, right? So you would still need to remember this type of structure in the hierarchical semantic network model, okay? So uh, one big deal we said with a hierarchical semantic network model is the notion of cognitive economy. We only have so much information in our brains to store information, so much space. So we need to, we need to be economical about our storage space. Uh, otherwise we'll be overwhelmed and we're just not gonna be able to store information. That might be important. So we got to find an economical way to do that, to store this information. So we want to store it, if we can, just once. That would be the goal, anyway, to store it just once and not have to store it 50 times. So that is the notion of cognitive economy. And this means if you want to store it just once or as few times as possible, this means you have to store it at the highest level possible in the network right, in the hierarchical network. You need to store it at the highest level possible because if you can store it under animal on that level in your hierarchical semantic network model, then that's going to cover, right, an animal. That's going to cover all mammals, all birds, all fish. Everything below that is going to be covered by it being stored way up, all right? So uh, that's something very important, cognitive economy, right? We said that. Now the other thing with the hierarchical semantic network model that we said is that everything should be stored at the same level when they're st stored under a, a, a node, right? Everything under that node should be equi equally distant from that node. Uh, so you should have under dog, right? Subordinate of that, below that, Right? You have Bernese Mountain Dog, Dobermans, Afghan Hounds, Chihuahuas. You would have all the different breeds of dog stored equally distant from dog, which would be the superordinate node above right? those breeds. So also remember that subordinate node and superordinate node when you're talking about the organization in the hierarchical semantic network model. A superordinate node is above and a subordinate node is below, 
They use those terms to refer to the organization of the nodes to each other, right? So mammal would be a superordinate node to dog, but at the same time, dog would be a subordinate node to mammal, all right? And then Bernese mountain dog way down here is subordinate, right, to dog, but dog is superordinate to Bernese mountain dog. So you have to remember that subordinate and superordinate structure, which you also have uh, later in this chapter in the prototype approach anyway. You know, superordinate categories, very all-encompassing, include lots of different kinds of things. Subordinate categories, very specific, right? Uh, so back to the hierarchical semantic network model. Uh, we here mentioned that the typicality effect is a problem for the hierarchical semantic network model, right? So as described in the hierarchical semantic network model, you're measuring reaction time, right? You're having people res respond to these sentences, you know, confirm or deny the truth of these statements, that sort of thing. So a burning is mountain dog is a dog, you know, measure their reaction time. And so if items, the, the model predicts that these items should be stored close to each other, you measure the reaction time to confirming those sentences, reaction time is faster than for what this model predicts about items or nodes that are stored further away from each other, like a Bernese mountain dog is a mammal. Right? Those are stored further away in the network, so reaction time is longer, and for the most part, those reaction times match what the hierarchical semantic network model predicts will be the structure right, in memory. However, uh, there seem to be some instances of concepts that are more typical instances of that concept. What that means and when you're studying the hierarchical semantic network model anyway, is that some items are more typical instances, <coughs> sorry, pardon me, as measured by reaction time. <coughs> right? So reaction time to them is faster. So we said before, <coughs> and use the example of a bird in this instance, right? So you have bird, and then you've got the various types of birds stored equally distant at the same level under bird. <clears throat> so reaction time to all of those should be the same, but reaction time to all of them is not the same. Reaction time for typical instances of a bird are faster. So reaction time to the sentence, a robin is a bird, is faster, right, than the sentence to an ostrich as a bird, for instance. And that typicality effect in terms of there being a faster reaction time to some members or some examples of a concept, that's a problem for the hierarchical semantic network model. That violates the model's predictions. So that shows us the model cannot be completely correct. Okay? So I hope this helps, and good luck on the test on Monday afternoon.